So today's topic is fascial expansions. It's a really interesting topic. Fascia is really on the leading edge of musculoskeletal care. Now, when I start talking about fascial expansions, I'm referring to the interconnectedness. I'm talking about the ultimate kinetic chain. I'm also talking about integrating traditional Chinese medicine with the latest research in fascia. So let's start out with a fascial expansion for the shoulder. Now, we could actually spend an entire day just talking about all the interconnections here, but I want to basically tell you about some of the different fascial planes that are connected. There's something called the deltoid fascia. Now, the deltoid fascia adheres strongly with the deltoid muscles, but it's continuous with the brachial fascia. So we're talking about all the interconnections up into the neck here. It's also interconnected with the pectoral fascia. The pectoral fascia basically interconnects the pectoralis uh, major muscle. It consists of two layers, and it also connects right onto your, the collarbone here. And then we look underneath the arm here, and we get onto what we refer to as the subscapular fascia. You okay there, Mickey? Mm-hmm. Now, the subscapular fascia is really interesting because it's connecting to the front of the shoulder blade. Now, we don't really think of it as connecting into the middle of the back, but there's also what we refer to as the rhomboid fascia. The subscapular fascia connects into the rhomboid fascia. So we have the deltoids, the pectoral, and the subscapular fascia connecting right in to the mid-back. The next area that interconnects with the shoulder is the axillary fascia. Now, the axillary fascia is a strong quadrilateral tissue that links to the brachial fascia. So all these different areas, we take anatomy and we think that one structure is independent from another. In reality, they're all connected. It's just like if we look at the supraspinatus fascia up here. Now, the supraspinatus fascia is really interesting in that it actually connects underneath the shoulder blade here. Just turn your side a little bit there, Mickey. No, just like that, that's fine. So we also have what we call a scapular fascia that actually connects up into the neck. Now, this is interconnected, and we also have what they call the infraspinatus fascia, and this is a dense, dense fascia. And it connects onto the one of the, um, besides the infraspinatus muscle, the teres minor muscle, muscle, two of the uh, rotator cuff muscles. On your back again here. And then we have what we call the clavicular pectoral fascia. Now we're going through multiple structures here, but realize these are all completely interconnected. Now, one of the most interesting things that we start looking at all the structures of the shoulder here, and I was saying how it actually connects back to the rhomboid muscle here. Just turn on your side a little bit here. If we start looking at the back muscles, we'll see that the superficial layers of the back muscles, it envelopes the trapezius muscle up here and the whole large latissimus dorsi as it comes down here. It basically covers it. And then we start getting a little bit deeper and it fuses right into the rhomboid muscles. And another muscle which is fairly close there, the serratus posterior superior. Now, and inferior. So we start thinking that, okay, this is an independent structure and how can this affect another structure is because they're all connected with fascia. So one of the things I want to talk about is actually the correlation between traditional Chinese medicine and fascia. So what I'm referring to is actually acupuncture. Now, acupuncture points are found along meridians or channels of energy in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, we talk about something being on a liver meridian, gallbladder, it could, not necessarily related to that specific organ, but these are, in their theory, channels of energy. Now, modern research has revealed that acupuncture points often correspond to areas where there is a high density of nerve endings, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, as well as an increase in electrical conductivity. What this suggests is, is that if we stimulate these points, it could have a physiological effect on the body, such as increasing neurotransmitters, endorphins, and even pain relieving substances, as well as regulating blood flow and increasing immune function. So when an acupuncturist or anyone basically treats an area, we don't just insert a needle in, we actually need to stimulate the nervous system. So I'm gonna show you points here in acupuncture where we get in and we actually stimulate areas. And it's not a matter of just putting a needle in and keeping it there. 
what we actually do is we rotate it, we pull it back, and if we're working on the tissue, we get in and, and move the tissue around a bit. And in acupuncture, when you put a needle in, you twist it around, you pull it back and forth, you actually wait for the body to have what they call a tug response. So the actual the tissue grabs onto the needle. So we're gonna go over a few points here related to the shoulder. And this is where we're tying it all into a, a fascial expansion for the shoulder. We say, okay, how do I actually tap into all these different areas of fascia? I mean, there's so many different planes of fascia. Well, fortunately, we have a very long history in traditional Chinese medicine of accessing acupuncture points for specific conditions. So we're gonna get into a number of them. We're gonna go over each one of these points and I'm gonna show you how to actually elicit a response in that area. So one of the first points I'm gonna talk about is called gallbladder 34. And one of the first things you should be saying is the topic today is a fascial expansion of the shoulder. Why are we on the leg? Well, the interesting thing is that there's a, about a 90-some percent correlation between fascial thickenings and acupuncture points. And these fascial thickenings have 10 times the neurological receptors as compared to normal tissue. So by actually activating a particular area, we can get a response throughout the entire body. And there's a very, very long history in Chinese medicine of using distal points or points away from, well, in this case, the shoulder, which has a significant effect on the area. And we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years of actual research and showing the correlation. And now modern science has come up with this and they've looked at it and they go, well, this is incredible because we are seeing this correlation. Uh, we take researchers like Helen Langevin at Harvard University and she is both uh, one of the leaders in fascial research but also teaching uh, acupuncture and you will see that there are these massive correlations there. So, gallbladder 34, and I'm just gonna get a point here, and this is located on the lateral aspect of the lower leg, below the knee, in the depression, but right here, anterior to the fibular head. In Chinese medicine, we call about a chun, um, anterior inferior to the head of the fibula. So here's the head of the fibula here, and just below that here, I'd have to take Mickey's hand actually to find it, but it, it's about right here. So when I'm in there, I'm going to stimulate this point. Nikki, how are we doing? So tender. All right. So I'm going to. I'm not just going to go like kind of rub the area here. I'm going to get in there enough to actually make a change on the area. Okay. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of funny starting out this point though. On the leg, we're actually dealing with a fascial expansion of the shoulder, but a very common acupuncture point for treating shoulder injuries. So the next point I'm gonna go over is small intestine 10. This is found on the posterior aspect of the shoulder in the depression inferior to the scapular spine. So we're gonna find the scapular spine here. We're gonna go slightly inferior there. And it's one tune directly below the scapular spine. Mickey, is that pretty sensitive? Yes. Like really sensitive right there. That's quite sensitive. Okay, so we're gonna get in there and we're gonna stimulate this somewhere between, could be 30 seconds to a minute. And we want to be stimulating, not just pushing in there, but actually working the area out quite a bit. You okay there? Yeah. Okay. Good. And again, for about 30 seconds to a minute. So we started out with gallbladder 34 on the leg and now small intestine 10. So the next point I'm talking about is small intestine 11. Now, it's located in the region of the scapula in the depression in the center of the subscapular fossa, level with the fourth thoracic vertebrae. So if we go up here, we're gonna go down the tubal prominence just below that. We're going to go to T1, T2, T3, and approximately T4 in there. Go across from there. And scapular spine, subscapular fossa, right about there. <laughs> okay, right there. You okay there, Mickey? That's tender. Wonderful. Okay, again, we're going to stimulate this. And if we had a needle in there, we'd be looking for a tug response, but we'll get in there for about 30 seconds to a minute. So once again, gallbladder 34, small intestine 10, small intestine 11. OK. 
Yeah, pretty tender right there, right? It's so tender. <laughs> yeah. Is that starting to back off a little bit or not? Not yet. Not quite. <laughs> not yet. Okay. So don't just get in there and you know just push on the area. Like really work the area out. Get in there because you want this to have that strong neurological effect on the entire fascial plane, planes really. So now we're gonna get into large intestine 15. Now, when the arm is abducted to 90 degrees, this point is lateral or forward. It's on the deltoid, the medial deltoid muscle of the shoulder in the depression of the anterior superior portion of the shoulder. So we're talking, yeah, about right there. How's that feel? It's tender. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. So once again, we get in here and stimulate the point for about 30 seconds to a minute. Is that as tender as it was? Still pretty tender, eh? <laughs> All right. So, 30 seconds to a minute, it should start to settle down a bit. But this way we can access multiple planes of fascia. Yeah, yeah. it's better now. Like even just almost like a switch. Yep. So now we're gonna get into large intestine 16 acupuncture point. Now, this one is right in the lateral portion the upper end of the supraspinatus fossa in the depression between the scapular spine and the clavicle. So we're talking fall of the supraspinatus fossa right over clavicle here, right there. Okay, we're gonna stimulate. How are we doing there, Mickey? Our thunder. Okay, 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. Now, we would combine this work with our fascial work in terms of releasing structures in the MSR protocols and also joint manipulation. Good. Is it as tender right there still? Much better. This is dropped right yeah. now. Good. Okay, so this is large intestine 16. So the last point I want to talk about here is large intestine 11. Now, Large intestine 11 is positioned on the lateral aspect of the elbow in the depression at the midpoint in the line connecting between the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and the lateral end of the cubital crease. So we're talking here, mid in between, be right there. Feeling that, Mickey? Yes. Okay, so once again, we're gonna get in there, we're gonna stimulate this point for about 30 seconds to a minute. Pretty tender in there? That's really, it's nice though. Yeah? <laughs> the forearms are sore. So definitely, it's interesting though, if we consider kinetic chain relationships, how all of these points, even though they may be distal from the shoulder, have such a strong effect. So as we've gone through here, we've gone over gallbladder 34, small intestine 10, small intestine 11, large intestine 15, large intestine 16, and the last point here, large intestine 11. Starting to settle down a little bit? 100%. Yeah, good.